Welcome to the Deadly Addiction channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. All right. I enjoyed the first season more than the second season. And my enjoyment of the first season was more spectacle and not really invested immensely in the show or the characters. My love for Tolkien and his stories is immense. My heart was broken when they fucked up the Shannara series because that's like my favorite growing up. But I get a weird feeling when I watch season two and maybe it's a realization that expectations are, you know, not met to a certain extent. And sometimes they're turned on purpose. And that could be a creative thing. Look, I'm not a showrunner. And, but when I look at The Rings of Power, and I got through season one, an enjoyable enough romp, I got a feeling... This show is made for people who know nothing about Tolkien. Who could be fans of the Lord of the Rings movies, which are incredible. The first three are, near I say, the best trilogy ever. Individually, they're great movies, some of my favorites. And even the Hobbit trilogy is mindless fun, and I enjoy it. There's a great performances. I love... um the actor playing Bilbo and besides some of the you know <laughs> dwarves here and there there's fun to be had even though it was broken into three movies and I'll watch all three without a sinking feeling in my stomach or a annoyance that grows now it could be me getting lazy with podcasts and stuff but I find myself stop taking notes and this show, maybe the disappointments and the annoyances getting printed on my brain and I just don't feel like putting it on fucking paper. And there's not enough of an enjoyment and wow and awesome factor. So I find myself wanting to delve into the lore of Tolkien, but not in this show. I, I want to go back to the Cimarrals and the original trilogy and The Hobbit unfinished tales and some of those stories don't even um work for me in a writer's um aspect of immersion and it's great lore now there are some amazing ones but you've got a show that is taken from certain elements drawing them out and i don't think i could <laughs> you know, give this show a lot of credit, which I would want to do. I, I, from episode to episode, you know, my, my mind is just going in different places that, you know, don't find myself immersed in these shows. It's very rare that I will even think, it even comes to my mind, to fast forward part of an episode and holy shit I had to stop myself numerous times that is bad in my opinion and again I talk about being in the right mindset or where I am in life and things going on but that doesn't mean I didn't love the wheel of time for all its faults and Going back to, like, Legends of the Seeker, I, I get so much fun watching those shows. And not even giving any credit to the fucking Hercules or the Xena, but it is fun to be had in a, a certain environment of fantasy. And I think this show is for people who don't really know much of the law. And I think that's... I don't know if it's a failing on my part. Um, I'm so happy if a friend tells me they love the show and it's, it's awesome. I'm fine. And it's it does bring joy to my heart. I don't go back and go, oh, what an asshole. Or, you know, or try to point out 
with certain things. Although I did have a conversation with a friend and was giving him the point of view of why Tolkien purists are just fucking irate over the show. Now, there is a... I don't know if it's in the Simmerals or what part of the lore it's in, or maybe the appendixes, but there is a line about when Galadriel leaves that the um, forest, the gardens or whatever, lose their luster or start to fade. Now, tying these rings, the elven rings, into the longevity of the elves' time on Middle-earth, I thought was a big mistake. The order that they put them in, I got to agree with some of the purists, um, you know, but I do understand that the show has its story to tell and it's fitting in things in different ways. I, you know, I go back to the original movie when, um, what is it, in the books, it's Gloria Findel that comes to Aragorn and rescues Frodo. In the cartoon, it might be Legolas. Legolas. And in the movie, it's, uh, you know... His love, Liv Tyler, fucking... And I'm okay with certain things. And I get it. It registers in the brain. And for some people, it, it, it grates on them. But this is, you know... I don't know. If you're going to try to do the second age going into the third... And yeah, this might not mean much to... Just your average viewer who doesn't really care or know about the law it can be a little you know concerning when you're just trying to follow and you have that sort of blueprint in your mind where you kind of know where things would fit in and it's going to flow now putting that aside as a show on its own i think it does a bad job with editing and storytelling why am i fucking trying to fast forward an episode or part of an episode it, it just i was so i was shocked this is my thing i, I played dungeons and dragons since i was eight years old been a dungeon master game master in every genre you can think of the dungeon dragons even tolkien even middle earth star wars star trek superheroes you name it everything and I should be able to just eat this show up like it's candy, even at its faults. And that's what kind of sort of bothers me. And because I like to meditate and, you know, work out my own fucking bullshit, I found that there was a part of me that wanted to skip doing this podcast just to get to something else. And maybe get more time to rethink or, you know, is it? hesitation and i don't know but i i can't get through this season without being disappointed and maybe myself fine you know i don't know uh should i come in with a more open mind but even when they're showing parts that pull you out because you know the second season wants to start with um Sauron taking over after Morg Morgoth, whatever the fuck his name is, dies or gets, you know, defeated by the, the powers that be, and he's going to be the new Dark Lord. And they show the crown um, with the Simmerals taken out, obviously, and a resize for Sauron, which is explained. It's... It was jarring for me, like, it, the end of the first season is him, him, when I say him, Sauron, in Mordor, after the events of the first season, him turning the stupid fucking sword key that throws water into the volcano, anyway. Um, and then... You know, where my brain is going with the rings that were made, the elven rings. It just started scattering everything that I was expecting. And again, if it maybe it's better to say if a good, really good show would pull it off better, I wouldn't mind. But 
you know, they show Sauron getting betrayed by the orcs and Adar. I think it's a different actor now. And, you know, I don't know. And Okay, so we've got that, which is a totally jarring difference from Sauron smiling after the events of season one and going to Mordor to him to now them showing him in the past then um Elrond is being chased by Galadriel and again where my brain was was not expecting this they go through a major part of the storyline for the whole fucking season with Elrond not trusting the rings and being a fucking snooty ass and for one of the things that I liked about the first season, although I don't like the look of certain things, I like the actor of Elrond, but it was more of his interaction with the dwarves, which is non-existent basically in this season. So what's going on? Oh, you know, okay, maybe this is, you know, a part of storytelling and we're going to tell it this way and they're mad at Galadriel for not telling them it was Sauron. And again, when you watch the first season and she finds out it's not, he's not this, Sauron's not, you know, he's impersonating a king, sort of whatever. They show in this season how it led to that, where he was betrayed by the orcs, uh, killed, seemingly killed. And reforms himself by absorbing life forms and then finds himself with a ragtag group of people. The guy has the pouch on his neck with the emblem. That Anyway, you see him on the raft and then he meets up with Galadriel. And then you got Galadriel again in the present time chasing Elrond. No, oh, don't use the rings. It was Sauron. She didn't tell us. And I found it just fucking annoying. That they want to make a part of the show in the drama that Galadriel was betrayed, and they do go into what made her not recognize Sauron, or that she wanted to have this and have a forgotten king help her and defeat Sauron. Like the, the motivations for why, but it becomes, in my opinion, annoying, and it just for the whole fucking season, and they get the rings. Elrond jumps off a fucking waterfall, meets Curdon, Serdon, uh, you know, who you know in the books, gets the ring, and again, it's something that you know that he gives the ring to Gandalf when he comes off the boat. So what does that mean? Spoilers. And this is a major spoiler for the fucking season, which was annoying that the stranger wizard with the fucking halfling is Grandalf, Gandalf. And so what does that mean? That he's going to have to be killed or his body's destroyed, sent back and then come back over the boat, meet Ceridon, give him the ring or they'll do an in, you know, in season thing where. Gandalf meets up with him and he's given the ring. E either one is it grates on me and it starts to annoy me. Now, in that is, in my opinion, bad editing. Um, the way they're telling the story, the way they're cut into characters and different events didn't work for me. So it, it kind of compounds on things. Whereas in an excellent, amazing show, you let these things go by, they do not even really notice until you go back to do a deep dive where you watch some of these amazing, um, really talented fucking YouTubers and stuff that pull apart these shows and expose a lot of the flaws and some of the good and great things about the show. But, you know, I'm trying to play that middle ground of just... You know, using this type of podcast to just have my own type of therapy to get my, you know, voice out on certain things. I played with the idea of, you know, spending two hours. Well, I did a fucking acolyte, like a three hour thing, but it was more like me going through the episodes, just <clears throat> fucking annoyed. 
And as you're watching this, for me, just started annoying me. I was fucking bored at times. This should not happen in any fantasy type show. As bad as the Shinara series was and other things that have fucking come and gone. The Dungeons and Dragons movies. It was, you know, fun to be had and you roll your eyes, you shake your head, you know, and I usually, for the most part, always, you know, what, what a weird phrasing, because it's unavoidable sometimes to find things online and get little tidbits about a show, but I generally, after I finish uploading my podcast, I'll then go, out, go around and for the people I like and even some of the people I don't like, get their views and their perspective on the show or movies that I'm know doing i i got a feeling i'm gonna agree with a lot of shit i just um you know like again what can i give credit to maybe some of the effects the orcs um but then again like the numenor stuff like some of that stuff just looks so cheap and fake so there's a balance of what's good and bad there, but I don't find myself, you know, in breathtaking moments and awe, and it's not, it's not a fun ride for me. Again, we're ending the first episode with, you know, firing, finding out, um... What was Sauron's name? I think it's Halbrand. He's you know, impersonating, goes to a daw. And it just fucking, it was annoying me. Like, okay, so Sauron gets taken. He's Halbrand. He convinces a daw to let him go and go to the rings. And my brain's like, are you fucking, like, I don't know, contrived is the right word, but just so fucking frustrated that you can't, it wasn't done better. And you got the things with the rings they're putting on the rings because Sirdon was tasked by Elrond to throw it in the deepest ocean because they can't figure out how to destroy them. Some bullshit, right? Obviously. And Sirdon comes back, you know, tempted by the power of the rings, and they put the rings on. Fine. Galadriel's got her ring. Was it Nenya or Sirdon's got his? And. Gilgalad, the High King of Elves, has his, and the, the, you know, the essence of the Elves are restored, and the trees get bright fucking flowers on them and stuff. Again, this is annoying me in the back of my mind, like, why are you doing this? Fine, you're gonna tell your own story, it feeds into this story you told about a Balrog and a fucking Elf. And the Simrals and leaking into the earth from the tree. Fine, and, you know, okay, your own narrative of storytelling, getting to the heart. This was one of the excuses I was trying to use with Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon, where, you know, okay, do your own thing, but you realize Rebel Moon is just either paying homage or stealing from a lot of stuff. Now, I'm totally honest about my novel that I wrote, or my potential trilogy, is uh, The Five Deadly Addictions, and it was how much I love The Five Deadly Venoms, my love of Forgotten Realms, and D&D, and I wanted to pay homage and do my own thing, so it's five students of the Addiction Master, the Smoking Monk, the Drunken Monk, etc. So, so I can see that, and the appeal to that, but... It, here, I don't know, it's just not fitting in right. It's not making me feel super interested and brought into the fucking, this world and this story they're trying to tell me. Uh, again, you know, there are some great effects, maybe, you know, a good shot here and there, but way less captivating to me than the first season I almost give the first season a pass. It's like, yeah, check this out. It's, you know, it's a different way of delving into the Lord of the Rings, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I find myself almost at the opposite end of the spectrum, personally. And I'm curious when I wrap this up, will I be even recommending this? 
you, you got this cut between, um, let's say, Sauron and Galadriel's story is kind of linked with Celebrimbor, the High King, and then you got the dwarves, which, you know, you can say it kind of cuts in here and there because they're going to go to the dwarves and offer them the rings. And you've got the Nemorians, um, and the fucking wizard with the half elf, and they followed and you get another elf. Not done good, in my opinion. They even introduced Tom fucking Bombadil. I mean, they show a fucking Balrog in action. They, you know, these are the things that should be like breathtaking and things you just want to rewatch and like, holy shit. And I gotta admit, it doesn't work for me. Um, I don't know. And then they, they were doing this, uh, and they got the stranger Gandalf, let's just say now, and this dark wizard. I wanted it to be that the stranger was just another blue elf, uh, blue wizard, and you can kind of just add to the story of what was never really told, but hinted at by Tolkien, that there were five as starry, two were blue, but you never, you didn't know what happened to them. And then you know about Saruman, Gandalf, and Radagast, and, you know, we see that portrayed. Why not use this opportunity to make him just one of those blue elves and maybe blue, I keep saying blue elves, blue wizards, and maybe that's sort of where they'll go. Like, it's just another, you know, fucking with your expectations. But on, on its face, it's just doesn't work for me. And it, again, at points annoys me and bores me. This is supposed to be, you know, a fantasy take me away type thing. And yeah, the halfling and you got the other fucking one pops up, Poppy, you know, well, okay, there's going to be some, I don't know, fucking Halbrand shows up to tell a brim boy. And that whole thing just felt such bullshit. I mean, yeah, I know what's supposed to happen in the books, but if you're going to portray it this way, I think it has to be done better. And by the middle of that story, well, towards the end of that story, it's fucking Sauron just making magic illusions to keep Celebrimbor in this fucking thing. And he's getting mad that the rings don't, you know, should be made. And is Sauron that inept? And there's a part where he fucking shows him a jar of mithril, uh, great, you know, grains of mithril, and says, "Look, you can finish this one part per nine. What the fuck?" He says. And then it's revealed that it was never really Mithril, it was Sauron's blood. Like, did they even fucking need Mithril? Was, is it even important? Is it what they're obviously going to say is why the rings made for the men are so corrupted and turns people into wraiths? But, yeah, they get the fucking dwarven rings and... That process, the whole Celebrimbor lying to the High King in a letter, them and the song bringing it back up. I just felt it. I just started getting fucking annoyed. Like, I'm bored. I'm getting frustrated. Um, you find out in between things that um, one of the human women with the elf and the kid died in between, and he's after fucking. <laughs> You know, Broadwind dies and off screen type of thing, and Aranda, dear. It just doesn't work this season. And I kind of fucking liked Broadwind. So, you know, fuck me. And things happen. I get it. Actresses get, you know, one of a family, they get other projects, whatever. And I'm not here to, you know, kind of judge that. And the one thing that comes to mind is like The Matrix, where. <laughs> in the first one the guy survives uh the betrayal and he helps save them at the end on the ship and then the second movie he's gone <laughs> you're like and then you find out like the actor was like give me more money anyway oh i'm okay but again i think it's just like things that compound you know i'm annoyed i'm, I'm not expecting this was gonna happen and uh, the storytelling is not fixing it for me it's not putting me in and um yeah, like the wild men, Theo. I, I can't stand Theo in this fucking show. 
you know, and then they make them have a grand fucking you know, connection to the fucking ends, which I, you know, anyway. Okay, so you're like, you like bikes, you're by episode three, and the fucking elves are like, look, we gotta fucking tell Celebrimbor that Halbrand was fucking Sauron. And it, again, I just start going, what the fuck? Like, you're in the fucking first season. Yeah, I know Galadriel figured it out. And she doesn't tell anybody and they're mad at her. And I'm like, are you fucking, this is what you're doing? So, of course, they send fucking word out to fucking uh, Eregion to tell a Brimbo with his new forge built. And they never get there, and Celebrimbo doesn't know. So when Halbrand is like, hey, you know, blah, 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 he's like, I can't let you in. You know, Galadriel said, you know, you're not who you th say you are. <laughs> and it's not like he says, oh, well, you're fucking Sauron. You know, I get this weird feeling from you. No, it's like, oh, play of words, this and that. Let me in. He gets let in, and then he reveals that he is... The fucking sent from the Valar, the fucking Lord of Gifts, uh, you know, and okay, so he's tricking him, he, I, I didn't buy it, I just don't buy it for the whole fucking season, and then, yeah, they're, they're saying he's using illusions, and you know, as Keller Brimbo is figuring it out, he kind of, it's too late, right, he's got the Dwarven Rings and made. They're fucking handed out. And, you know, I'll give a little credit with the dwarf side of the story. Although it started fucking annoying me and frustrating me. But I'll give credit that that's... It continues on kind of what I liked about the dwarves in the first season. So, uh, I don't know. You know, Kelebrimbo lied. And that influenced the rings and the dwarves... Because the fucking dwarf guy comes back and like, my father's crazy. And he's got the six fucking, the rings that they made for the dwarves. And many there were. And he won't give them out to the other dwarf lords until they give him a, you know, money or whatever the fuck, gold. And his father was never greedy. And Celebrimbo's like, no, we made them perfect. And he's questioning what's going on. And the guy's fucking like, do you know who this fucking Lord of Gifts guy is? And... You know, I just found it like, I don't know, so disappointing. They they even put the fucking um, mission where they can't get word from um, Celebrimbor, so Elrond sent out, Galadriel goes with him, and is that fucking bullshit tension that I fucking hated? Yeah, yeah, wah, 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 you didn't tell us. No, the rings aren't nice. They're not good. You're wearing it. I ain't taking counsel from the ring. I was just fucking annoyed. <clears throat> Started me not liking Elrond. I'm sorry. Uh, besides the fucking stupid haircut, you know, which I was forgiven in the first season because it was pretty good dialogue. And I kind of liked how he was interacting with the dwarves. You know, they got to go... You know, find out what's going on, and if Sauron's in Iridion, and oh, let's throw in Barrow Whites. Um, you know, and then their fucking Galadriel gives the ring to whatever and gets captured. And I'm like, uh, is this what we're fucking doing? So I gotta watch Galadriel fucking be caught and captured, not immediately slain, pulled open all her organs, her, all her hair cut off, like, yeah, okay, so Adar's got a fucking purpose, he wants to stop Sauron, which I found to be bullshit, also, again, all these things just keep, like, popping up and adding on, and if you're not getting me with solid, seamless, really good transitions from one story to the other... Uh, interesting parts to end on and start on these things are going to annoy me I kind of liked again the dwarf thing and he's using the ring to find things that the stone singers couldn't find and I kind of will say that that might be like the dwarves might be the best part of the season for me and that's just not saying much 
again, now that the dwarves have their rings, the elves have their three, Sauron's got to get fucking... Oh, Anatar's got to get Celebrant Boy to make the rings for men. And he's getting mad. Like, so the elven rings, the dwarven rings, the rings of men. Now Sauron will be able to craft his own ring to rule them all. But it seems like in this process, you would have just finished making the rings of men and there wouldn't have been a time clock ticking. And then it's all according to his fucking plan is he wants Adar to fucking attack because he doesn't have an army of his own and Gladriel fucking tells him. I'm just not buying it. I didn't care. And watching these fucking guys run through the forest, meeting the Ents, I should have been awestruck. And Numenor was like the worst part for me. They got to in interject the fucking daughter that they created. And you know, his son is in another fucking place. And because this is the king at the, in the beginning of the Lord of the Rings movies, in the flashback about them defeating Sauron, cutting the ring off. He has Nosso. He gets killed by Sauron, and his son, you know, Isildur picks up the ring, although just, you know, the sword, and cuts the shard and takes the ring. I'm fucking super interested in it, and the Faithless, and, you know, the, the downfall of Numenor, and I'm like bored and fucking wanting to fast forward this shit. They got a pretty good actor, if it's not for the fucking shitty costumes they give them and stuff. You know, I really would have liked them to go with the larger-than-life type of beings they are. But I let that pass. Just give me a solid story and um, keep me captivated. Oh, and the stranger going through the fucking thing, looking for things, finds Tom Bombadil. I mean, you know, again, I just don't buy it. And I'm okay with... The Anatar Sauron, you know, enchanting the people, taking over as administrator. Like, the things, you know, they could work. You know, Sauron and the Lord did, you know, convince Celebrimbor to do it. Again, it's done differently in different order, fine. Uh, but, you know, I should have been smiling ear to ear, you know, so excited when Tom Bombadil's around and... Yeah, just like I don't know, just not right. We've got the orcs now getting ready to destroy Iridion, Aragon, where the fuck it is, and they know Sauron's there, and Galadriel's captured. What a captivating storyline, and it just fucking bothered me. And that's being sarcastic, and they're using siege warfare, and the whole time Celebrant was in his fucking, you know. His fucking illusion trap, you know, making the rings, not making the rings, being in solitude, you know, almost coming out of it and getting put back into it. Uh, and then there's this thing where Adar thinks that the crown of Morgoth and her ring will can destroy Sauron forever. <laughs> yeah, uh, whatever. <sighs> and... Again, you've got the Numenor stuff, which should be so fucking cool. Elendil and, you know, Arpharazon and in the books, you know, and they, they talk about his betrayal and taking over and being Numenor's downfall. Because if I'm right in the books, it's Arpharazon and the Numenorians who bring Sauron to heal. And whether it's, again, they'll, they'll fucking make it his plan, which might be in the book, so, so that's fine. And Sauron gets captured by them and tempts the Nemorians from the inside. Goes from a captive to, like, an advisor. Like, where are they going to fit that in the show? That might be, you know, where my mind would go. But I don't think they care enough to make it really good for me or people like me. Ugh. <sighs> And, you know, yeah, there were some reveals, and, oh, Gandalf's got to get his staff. Again, these are like four to five plots and character arcs that are going through. Yeah, it could be done right. Maybe I'm just not a big fan of it to begin with. I'm known 
amongst my friends for giving Game of Thrones credit, but after season three, I gave no fucks about it. I was fucking tired of the way the structure was. Granted, they made better fights. They improved their, you know, CGI. It's in the, in the actors and the characters and that are fucking amazing done, but it just didn't hold my interest. And I went back and finished all the seasons and watched it turn into a fucking dumpster fire. Um, you know, we're getting towards the end of the season again. I want to fast forward certain things. I'm annoyed. I'm frustrated. I'm finding little joy here and there, but not enough to just, you know, make me fucking impressed and, you know, happy. And you've got uh, the armies attacking a city and nothing's wowing me. You find out. Oh, you know, Celebrimbo finds out eventually. He makes the rings for men, but it's too late when he finds out. He tries to... And what does he do? Does he try to destroy him first? Realizes he can't. And then, obviously, Galadriel escapes fucking the Adar and whatever. And he gives him to her. Right, right. So, Eregion's getting destroyed. It's fucked up. Uh, Sauron's kind of revealed. And... I'm not sure, you know, the fucking... The connective tissue between Galadriel and the final confrontation for the season with her and Sauron, I'll try to get to in a second. But, again, remember, they're, they're concentrating here on the fucking... The stranger and giving him the name the Grand Elf and the stores and poppy and fucking nori and what's going on with this evil wizard and who is he evil he might not be evil the people he sends uh what they, they're like it's supposed to be scary but it's not intimidating it's just fucking crazy so you're getting to, you're getting at the end you've got fucking Durin, the king kind of realizing at the end his folly when the fucking ga the Balrog comes up he takes the ring off and in an epic scene he clashes with the fucking Balrog and collapses everything you know so <laughs> this will be a great temptation for the show are they gonna say that this ends the chapter with the Balrog forever until the Lord of the Rings movie or will they keep going to that well literally, to fucking keep bringing the Balrog back into the affairs of the dwarves. I don't know, but, so that's supposed to be ended. You know, we've got the Gandalfs revealing, finding his staff and coming to fucking Tom. His, what is his, what will his mission be? Again, I would find it way more interesting if it was the Blue Wizard and you find new things that happened with him and his adventures and what happened ultimately with him. But I don't think they're going to do that unless Mithrandir, Gandalf, his Istari fucking name or whatever, is like his brother and they're such good friends, he takes the name. Like, I don't know. I'm not one of those people who's happy he's fucking Gandalf in that sense. Um, yeah, well, you, you think uh, the... the Elf guy, Aaron the whatever the fuck. You think he's fucking dead. And he comes back out of nowhere. And yeah, the final confrontation, Sauron with Galadriel in a fight, he kind of bests her and defeats her. He gets the fucking rings for men. And she falls off a cliff or something near death. And they're gonna help her. She can't heal her. And I think it's Elrond was now has confidence, you know, that's his arc. He believes in the ring. And so Galadriel survives, obviously. Um, eh, you know. Uh, I don't get it. And I know I, I definitely could see they're going to make a last stand against Sauron. Because they'll have all of at us elves. Oh, that's right. Adar gets killed by his men who Sauron has put to his side. 
Zardar is out of the picture. Sort of interesting, even though they changed the actor. You know, you kind of here and there are like good actor and trying to do his best with the stuff and sort of interesting. You know, that's even Sauron has fucked up with his own people, his own, you know, in the past, like they show in the first season where Adar uses the crown of Morgoth to fucking betray Sauron and kills him. Or seeming fucking quotes. So th there'll be a final confrontation. Numenor will come to the aid and they'll take Sauron hostage and, and handcuffs or whatever the fuck. And then that story will evolve to show Numenor's downfall. Now, when they show the fucking Elendil and all that shit and the queen and in the first season, the big tidal wave, it almost like they fucked themselves because it seems like it's so distant and far now that you don't care. The destruction of Numenor is a, it's just like, it's not even thought about anymore. Maybe they should keep giving, and now she's blind, giving her this fucking vision of like, it's going to get worse. It's getting worse. Nothing's getting better. I don't know. Again, there are parts in almost every story arc where I wanted to fast forward. I just wanted to jump five, ten minutes because it was just fucking grating on me and I was getting annoyed and frustrated. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I did like a scene. <laughs> and I, I, I did take some notes here and there. The scene where the queen... Okay, so Elendil won't bend the knee to Farazan and he's sentenced to death and the way they figure things out and death, whatever, they toss him they, summon, they use these horns to summon the fucking Kraken you know, this big sea creature and they throw you in the water with it if it kills you you're guilty, if you live you're innocent so Elendil's going in he's, you know, he's got the integrity he's like, I'll fucking do this and then the queen says, no, it's my right. I'll take the challenge. And then they, they get this small fucking scene. It's very quick. And it's the daughter going, can she do that? And the guy in the, the lawyer going, yeah, well, by the book, she can do that. Now, for hours on, it's like, what? So the queen is put into the water with this fucking huge beast. And I'll grant it, I liked it. You think she's dead. She comes out. She's innocent. They proclaim her. Queen of the Sea, blah, blah, blah. And she gives Elendil Nossil, I think, in, I don't know what episode, if it's the end of a part, whatever. And I'm guessing he's going to go and start to build what becomes Gondor and Osgiliath. You know, I, I guess I see where that's going. It, again, if... If these parts were melded together better, if I was carried along and captivated by, I don't know, smarter setups and more interesting character arcs, like, there's no way I want to see fucking Elrond pouting and fucking with his bullshit with Galadriel for the whole fucking season. And again, Galadriel's captured and Elrond's got to do this. And again, I d just certain things aren't going to work for me when enough of them start piling up. I start just, you know, getting annoyed, getting fucking frustrated. It's, uh, you know, I start to see that the show doesn't want to please me, which is fine. Like, okay, I'm a selfish fucking prick. You know, I want everything done more like the book and... It's in my brain, and it's, again, I'm born in 71, so, like, the Tolkien books were, like, sort of the first fantasy things that engrossed me, and and then it was, uh, you know, I was playing D&D, &D, and then in one of my, I think it was my first love, Liz, um, got me into the Dragonlance novels, and they will always hold a place in my heart. The fucking Margaret Rice, Tracy Hickman, R.A. Salvatore, on and on and on. I am 
really disappointed. I'm using this word, and I think I did the, uh, what did I put out last week? It was the fucking Crow. <laughs> the Crow reboot, reimagining was fucking, ugh, it was so boring and dumb and annoying. <sighs> I just don't think this is gonna really work for me, and of course I'll watch next season. And they're doing this Isildur, Astrid thing. And I think it's, you know, giving a little more depth to Is Isildur. And, you know, okay, fine. He has children and obviously Aragorn, the heir, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, I can almost kind of like that angle. She's a wild, wild person trying to hide her, you know, her origins type thing. You know, but I'm just not buying the actor and, you know, what he's got to go through. To me, he should have been with his father and setting off on this uh, different portions of what I would believe the history is. And again, this is fucking me rambling now. Again, again and again, I am wanting to fast forward things. I want to get through this fucking thing. And the recesses in my own subconscious. I don't even want to do the fucking podcast. And where do I stand at the end of this? And I'm not excited for a fucking other season. Of course, I'm going to watch it. Of course, I'm going to hope that it is improved. And look, a lot of shows take a season to get on their feet. But this has a lot to fucking live up to. And a lot of... You know, history, you know, it's not like watching, like, I talk about Supernatural, uh, the show. It's kind of hard to get through the first season. I was telling my friend, but once you get caught up, you're in third, fourth, fifth, sixth season. You're like, this is fucking whatever. But it, it didn't tie to a rich history of some of the be most beloved law and history and novels ever in, the, in you know, in, in the, the history of the world, especially for fantasy buffs and you know so immersed in this <sighs> I don't I don't know I, I don't even know if I want to recommend this I guess just listen to this bullshit if anybody does for fucking 45 minutes whatever you know that it's, it's not a loving fucking property for me right now this is not something i really feel i want to give credit to in most cases and recommend and maybe the first season the spectacle of it the beauty of some of the shots the i don't give a fuck if galadriel has a sword and she's a fucking general give me good fucking stories give me an interesting character development um, again, Elrond's interaction with the dwarves. Here, it's like Celebrimbor has one interaction, Sauron as Anatar does, and he gets pushed away, and dwarves on their own, I guess, at a bright spot in this fucking season for me, which is kind of crazy, but, you know, I don't know. And they, they do a little thing with the orcs and humanizing them, to a certain extent, where they're like, oh, you know, Adar's just killing us all. He doesn't give a fuck about us. And isn't that what Sauron did to us? And again, okay. Adar with his children and Sauron taking them over at the end. Again, I think this is going to lead to, you know, obviously the books in a sense, because it'll be a, another confrontation and Numenor will be there. And they'll take Sauron hostage, and it'll be part of his fucking plan. And they'll give the rings to the... Is that what he said? Uh, I think... I don't know if he said... As Anatar, yeah, he's like... Oh, because Celebrimbor doesn't want to make the rings for men. They're too easily corrupted. And yeah, that's something about in the books, and you can kind of go along with it. Uh, and he says something like... He starts mentioning people like Tuor and Bremen, like we'll find the best, most wise um, men, humans, basically. And I think he might mention Numenor. 
in that. So that would be his plan anyway. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes in on his own and imitates somebody and just gets in. But I would like to, to see the might of Numenor brought down on Sauron and he can't deal with it. And then he's captured, sort of. Uh, so there we are at the end of this fucking season. Again, I've mentioned this to most of the plot sense things and yeah, Aaron Deere and his crew from fucking Theo and the fucking ends and you got the stranger becoming Gandalf and yeah, just doesn't wow me. Galadriel's arc with fucking Elrond was just fucking annoying and frustrating. Killer Brimbor, halfway yeah, you know, decent acting for me. But again, maybe it's the fucking haircuts or something. Like, I don't know. Um, because when like Anatar's day, he's got the look, you know, he's even though he's impersonating the Lord of Gifts and it looks right to me to a certain extent. But even superficial things start to fade away like the first season to me. And I didn't like super rave about the first season. Like it's so fucking riddled with flaws and going back and watching people. I just shook my head in agreement with most of the people. Now I'll end this with, is this a doomsayer type uh, go along? Cause I, I've seen a thumbnail or two about how horrible the show is. And it's just gross, disgusting, blah, blah, blah. I gotta say, I'm tending to agree, you know, with a lot of the things that, again, I'll finish this and I'll go on a deep dive. And I got to say, I'm going to start agreeing with a lot of the, you know, a lot of the points you bring up. Um, this, it's one thing I've tried to make a, again, I don't know how many times I've said this, like I love the Green Lantern movie, but I know it's bad. I think it, it's why I love some of the it, it just show uh, YouTube, like EFAP, and it's smaller and regs. And they really decimate a lot of this stuff. And you might say, oh, then they say, oh, they, will, you know, they just want to be mean. But if you're honest with yourself, you can't argue with certain points. No, I don't let it bother what I like. There's, there's no amount of eight hour podcasts and deep dives that are going to make me not like the Green Lantern movie. But in watching those deep dives, I will agree on shitty storytelling, bad dialogue, bad this. Yeah, certain things carry it for me and I don't care. I like it. What am I going to do? I like shitty things sometimes. What, what can I say? And it's why I think I respect some of those podcasters and channels because there are times when you're watching maybe not the individual stuff like you know uh mauler or um the little platoon give credit to but when you're on like the show efap where they all get together it's like every frame of pause what i really like about it is it's not joining in the ooh he man woman haters club and shit like that it's when everybody at one point on those shows can say Holy shit, this was entertaining, but it was god awful. And I think I tend to really gravitate towards that. And I think I've started my podcast with my reviews, sort of, with that in mind. Like, it's one thing to criticize, and you know, this is shitty dialogue, it's shitty setups, it's shitty bullshit, but I fucking like it. It entertains me. This is that's wearing off for me with the show and that's just really the honest truth and that's where i'll end this um uh the spectacle the beauty of it is wearing thin on me it's gotta do better it's gotta you know really bring these things together and of course i'll watch it and i think that that's where i'll end this uh brings of power season two is disappointing to me it's frustrating it bored me at times and yeah there's some uh, drops of um, things that I like, the dwarves here and there. I kind of liked Anatar's uh, involvement in things. 
I wish I liked Gandalf better, but Keller Brimbor, the actor and the character, his conclusion of his arc, I think they did pretty well, and they fucked him up. <laughs> they just, well, they did in the books too, but, uh, you know, so there are some things that want the fucking scene with the queen in the water, and I even like this setup for that. So they, there are little things to like, but as a whole, I just can't take it in the things that compound that just pull me out make me frustrated and just get me annoyed and i don't even say who's a fucking showrunner on this like it's it just uh, i don't know charlie vickers you know sauron anatole like, fine um i don't know there's no real st i guess the standout is the fucking blind queen with that moment because it has a meaning like she's gonna take the rap for ellen dale's you know, not bowing the knee, and she's part of the faithless, and I think she says something cool, like, the first step on the faith, for the faithless, I have to take it, I'm the, you know, the queen, and, okay, bought that, so, there you go, there's my fucking thoughts on the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power season two, it's, beauty's waning, it's, not really captivating me, it's a little more frustrating and annoying, and I guess that's where I'll leave it. <clears throat> so I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Till next time.